Um, I've been teaching this uh, idea for a few weeks, looking at some of the prayers of the Apostle Paul uh, to kind of feed us uh, spiritually on this whole idea of having a strong prayer life as individuals and having a strong prayer life as a church. I've been calling this praying like Paul, praying like Paul. And so I want to dive into a, uh, another prayer of Paul, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. It says, to this end also we pray for you always. And just to pause for a moment and recognize that what to what end is he actually talking about? He's actually in the couple of previous verses here in 2 Thessalonians 1, talking about there will be a day when everyone will come face to face with uh, the incredible presence of Jesus. And uh, it's a pretty powerful thing to recognize that there is, he is saying in this passage, there will be those who pay the price of eternal destruction for redemption. Rejecting Jesus, but then all of those who have said yes to Jesus are, will be saved, but we are going to be in absolute amazement at how great Jesus really is. So he's saying in light of that, in light of the fact that all of us are going to face a day where either salvation or destruction, heaven or hell, in the, at the with that thought in mind, he says, I'm praying for you always that our God will consider you worthy of your calling. Fulfill every desire for goodness, the work of faith with power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus will be glorified in you and you in him in accordance with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to take a few minutes today and talk about this idea. This call is for you. This call is for you. And I'm coming off of this idea that our God would consider us worthy of our calling. So let me give you a few ideas to jot down to think about today. Number one is this. You have a calling from God. Every believer, every person, really, who even isn't a believer, has a calling on their life. He says, to this end, verse 11, we also uh, pray for you always that our God will consider you worthy of your calling. You may not even know or recognize what that calling is, but you are called by God. I like this verse in the message. Uh, it gets translated this way, because we know that this extraordinary day is just ahead, the day when we all face Jesus. We pray for you all the time. Pray that our God will make you fit for what he's called you to be. Paul had this idea uh, circulating in his mindset and his perspective on life about living a life that's worthy or up to this calling that he's given us. And in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1, he says, therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. He's reminding us that we've all been called and he's saying, I want you to walk in a manner that is in step with, that, that we step up and step into our calling in life. Every believer, every person has a calling on their life. And it's not just a calling like you're a great musician or, uh, or you, you're good at business or you know how to teach well. It, it truthfully, some of those gifts will be used, but the calling is not just a calling to succeed in business. It's a calling related to the purpose of God. And I just want to speak to the soul 
of every person in this room for just a few moments to think about what an incredible idea it is that God calls us. God is calling out to you and to me. I'm not just here by accident. Somewhere deep in the inner man of every woman and every man, God is calling us. There is something in our soul. There's something on our inside. There's something in us. And sometimes we don't even know uh, what that is actually happening inside of us. But I could tell you the first thing he's doing is calling us to himself. He's calling us to a relationship. He's calling us to get to know us, for him to get to know him. But then he's also calling us to purpose in life. You, you were born on purpose for a purpose. How many of you actually believe that? I was born on, no matter how you were conceived, no matter how you came into the planet, God did not have one of you. That's why he created you. We need you to be you serving this calling, this purpose that God has given to your life. Nobody is just here to take up space or to go through the motions. We all are called with a purpose. The Apostle Peter kind of went at it this way, 2 Peter 1.10. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and his choosing you. you your calling is your destined purpose. In other words, God had a destiny in mind when you were created at the moment of conception. You are destined with purpose in life. Then I can, I, here's what I know. I can have destiny. I can have destined purpose. There is a plan. There is a purpose. There is a reason why I'm alive because God brought me into this planet for a purpose. And God brought you into this planet for a purpose. And the Bible is super clear about this idea that literally from the moment you were conceived, you were conceived with purpose in your life from our mother's womb, which is why we believe it's so important to recognize the beauty of a life inside of a pregnant woman. Because the Bible says this, Psalm 139, verse 13, you created my innermost parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. There was purpose already for you and me. The moment we were conceived, I will give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made for the purpose that I was created for. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And Peter is speaking to us and he said, I want you to make certain about his calling and his choosing you. His calling on you, his choice of you. Get certain about this idea. Whether you know what that calling is or not, God does have a call on your life. And you are a chosen one. I am a chosen one. The Bible says, fearfully, wonderfully made, marvelous are your works. In other words, you wired me for my purpose. God wired you for your purpose in life. I think without that sense of 
My life, I'm called, I'm chosen, I'm special, I'm unique, I'm unlike anyone else. Without that sense of unique assignment from the Lord, life can degenerate quickly into just the maintenance of the routine. You just go to work, you cut the grass, you fix stuff around the house, every day, every week it feels, you, you get the oil changed in the car, you're just going through the routines, you're scrapping up enough to pay the bills. And I'm not against routines, actually. I, I think routines are pretty important. I think it's a, good habits are the foundation of destiny. So the truth is, it's good to have a routine. Every morning, just about 98% of every morning, I get up, I get my coffee, I read my Bible, I have a prayer time. It's a routine. I don't have to think about it anymore. Just get up and do it. Some routines are good. But I would say to all of us, without a sense of I'm called, I have a destiny, I have a purpose in life, the best you can do is just go through the motions. Just maintain the routine. So instead of just, instead of working to fulfill destiny, work is just trying to pay the bills. And instead of leisure being an opportunity to rest, to refresh, to recreate, leisure can become the goal in itself. Everybody working for the weekend. Instead of waking up in the morning and going, good morning, Lord, you wake up and go, good Lord, it's morning again. I'm saying you are a unique combination of giftings and personality and perception and experiences You've, you have been equipped by God for your calling. You know, the Apostle Paul recognized this a couple of times in the letters he wrote, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 1. Paul called as an apostle. Well, no matter what anybody else thought about Paul, he knew this. God called me to be an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Romans 1, 1, he started that letter with this. Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set apart, chosen for the gospel of God. Paul knew his calling from God. Didn't matter what anybody else thought. He knew God had called him to be an apostle. And as you read through the life of Paul and the letter said, he wrote, you find that it even gets more specified. He's not just an apostle, but he says, I'm called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Now, what I want to make sure we all get a hold of is this idea that our calling is not, it's not just people called to full-time vocational ministry. Every person, every person has an ordained purpose for life. And usually, you can start to locate your calling by starting to locate your giftings. You're fearfully and wonderfully made, and you come out. And the reality is this. If, if you don't like talking to people, you're not going to be very good on the hospitality team. Hello. Right? If you're not very good with numbers, you're not going to be very good at keeping the books. If you can't sing, we're not going to put you on the worship team. Some of us, the best we do is make a joyful noise. One of the reasons we put these guys so loud is make you think you're singing as well as they are, but you don't. I've heard some of you. We just put it up loud so you feel like I'm just letting it go. 
You are called. You are chosen. There is something that speaks into the soul of every person to say, there's got to be a reason that I live, that I take up space, that I have the gifts I have. The second thing I want to say today is this. You find your calling as you pursue your calling. So, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 1, 11, again, it says, To this end also we pray for you always, that our God will consider you worthy of your calling, but that he will fulfill every desire you have for goodness. In other words, there's something in you that says, I, I'm, I'm ready to step up. Now, every believer has, we all have common callings. That's not unique to any one of us. In other words, you don't need a special calling to pray. That's the calling that's on every believer. You don't need a special calling to serve. That's the calling on every believer. Hello, right? We, we don't need a special calling to love other people. That's a calling to every believer. You don't need a special invitation from heaven to pay tithe. That's the calling to every believer, right? It's not just the super dedicated. It's people who we're all called. To, you, don't, you don't need some kind of special magic to go tell others about Jesus. We're all called to do that. And what I want to say is this. You find your unique calling as you pursue the general calling. In other words, what's going to help you find the unique calling on your life is, I feel this call, I'm going to pray. My pastor keeps asking me to pray, I'm going to do it. I'm going to serve, I'm going to worship, I'm going to give, I'm going to help. And you, as you step into that, because the truth is, you always have to start where you are. One of the best ways to find out what your calling is, is start obeying what God is calling you to now. Let me try this side of the room, because that was a pretty good point. Start actually obeying what God is calling you to now, and as you grow your prayer calling, whoops, <laughs> I can't even stand up. As you, as you grow your serving, as you grow your loving, you're going to start to find the uniqueness of your call. Some calls are just going to be for a season. You don't need the whole story laid out in front of you right now. Just obey the current call. Instead of waiting for the perfect timing, instead of waiting for the perfect setup, instead of waiting for the perfect set of resources, let that call to goodness start to be alive inside of you. Jesus said this curious statement. Many are called... Few are chosen. Everybody in this room is getting a call from heaven. This calls for you. The word chosen is a compound word that literally would be translated to say out from. In other words, everybody's getting the call but not everybody's listening. The chosen ones are the ones who listen, who hear the call. When I call my girls, 
They never answer the phone. Drives me nuts. I know, I know they're seeing the call because the phone is always in front of them. Just like even in this moment, there are people in this room that they're not taking notes, they're surfing Facebook. Jesus is calling every single person in this room. But not everybody is listening to that call. And I, many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, few are listening. You got to hear the fact that you're called. You got to hear the fact that you're chosen. You got to hear the fact that you're destined by God to fulfill purpose. It all starts with the general calling of every believer, but then as you walk that out, you begin to hear your unique call. Hello, Jesus calling. I'd like for you to develop a prayer life Hello, Jesus calling. I'd like for you to start serving in your church. Hello, Jesus calling. I'd, I'd like for you to help out. I'd like for you to love somebody. I'd like for you to show up. I'd like for you to just worship me. Not just stand back and fold your arms and watch. Hello, it's making a call. This calls for you. Now you got to know God's first call is always unto Himself. He's always calling us to Him. And then purpose springs out of that. Here's the third idea because I think I've blessed you enough with that idea. It takes faith to fulfill your calling. It takes faith. Somebody just say amen in faith. So 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 11, he says, To this end also we pray for you always, that our God will consider you worthy of your calling, that he'll fulfill every desire you have for goodness, and... He'll fulfill the work of faith with power. Abraham was a great example of stepping out in faith. Hebrews 11 verse 8 says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for inheritance. He went out not even knowing where he was going. Abraham launched out. He took the first step because he felt the calling. He didn't know where the total end of the journey was going to be. He just knew God was calling him. Something was speaking to his soul to step out and to step in. He didn't know what it meant. He just knew, I got to somehow respond to this sense of call that's on my life. You know, faith is not foolish. But it doesn't always make sense to people who aren't hearing the call. There's people, they don't go, they're like, why do you go to that church? Because I feel called. Why, 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 do you, why do you serve God? Because I feel called. Not everybody hears that call. 1 Corinthians one twenty six says, Consider your calling, brethren. 
that there were not many wise, according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. And let me, let me tell you what I think this means. You never start your calling with what you need to fulfill your calling. Not too wise, not too noble, not too mighty, but you just stepped into it. You just stepped out. I remember when I wasn't raised in church, so when I first started going to the little assembly guy church I got saved in, it was tiny. 80 people would grow up to 120, somebody would get mad, 40 people would leave, we'd be back at 80 people. And uh, it was, they did love on me, and I was very appreciative, and still am. But the truth is, when, when I didn't get church, I didn't understand church, I didn't get the music, I didn't get, I didn't get the, whatever was going on, but I was probably in it maybe two months, three months max, and I, there, I just felt this calling to start a college and career Sunday school class. You might remember that kind of thing. A college and career Sunday school class. I didn't even know, I'd never even been to Sunday school before. So I just went to my pastor and said, I just feel like God is speaking to my heart to start this thing and I don't have any qualifications. I don't, you know, and I said, I don't, I don't know even how to do this. You're going to have to coach me some. And he didn't really coach me. He just, this is what he said to me, and it has stuck with me. God's calling is his enablement. So I said, okay. So I found a book that was speaking to me, and I went and started teaching from this book. And the class started small, and it grew and then it grew, and then it grew, and I figured out how to build a Sunday school class, but I wasn't mighty, and I wasn't noble, and I wasn't wise. I was just stepping out in faith to try to obey what God was telling me to do. 33 years ago, God sent Suzette and Tori and I, we rolled into Asheville to start a church. We didn't have any money. We didn't have any people. We didn't have any equipment. We literally had people, we were on staff of a church in Tallahassee, Florida. And when people found out we were leaving to start, they, they were like, wait a minute, you're not going to take a church, you're going to start a church? We're like, yeah. They said, do you know how to do that? I said, no, I don't. But here's what I have, calling. Suzette and I just like, we had this thing in us that was like, we just got to, we're going we're gonna to figure it out. We're going to give it a go. The whole, the whole church at the beginning, all the equipment, all the people, everything, our whole entire church used to fit in a little two-door hatchback Honda Accord. It was one of the few times our church was in one Accord. And uh, I haven't told that joke in forever. I've been saving it just for you. But the truth is, all we had was a call. God was calling us. And no matter how other people evaluated our capability, no matter how we evaluated our capability, something in our soul was saying, you gotta, you gotta step into, you gotta step up to. We had to give it a go. We had to try. We had to figure it out 
along the way. And let me just say this. It wasn't just a calling that brought us here 33 years ago. It was a calling that kept us in place when things went crazy sometimes, when people got ugly sometimes, when stuff went bonkers sometimes. You don't pastor a, a group full of humans for 33 years and not deal with some crazy people. It wasn't without a call. We would have said, forget it. See you later. I just go take another. I'll go sell some cars or something. But with a call, through all the ups and downs, all the battles, it's the call. It's the thing that speaks to your soul. You know, I think sometimes it's easy to look at someone else and go, of course they're called. They can do this. They can do that. They have this. They have that. But I don't have that. You don't think you have the goods for the job. And sometimes we tell ourselves, if I could sing like that, if I could speak like that, if I could be that good at business, if I could whatever like them, then of course I'd try. What makes a person venture out of their comfort zone? A sense of a call. They hear, they hear something not a lot of people are hearing. They hear a call from heaven. I want to pray with you today. I'm asking you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we're here to listen. We're here to hear. Father, every one of us in this room, uniquely gifted, uniquely called to serve the calling you've put on us. And I'm praying, God, for an awakening of a sense of purpose in every person's life, in this room and watching online and listening later on down the road. Father, help us. Help us to hear. Help us to obey. Help us to step up and step into to be worthy of the calling you've given us. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I believe the Holy Spirit is calling some of us today to take a step toward Jesus. Maybe you have never surrendered to Jesus before. I want to pray with you. Come on, let's, let's, let's at least step toward that. Maybe... You're here and you could say, man, there was a day when I used to be so close to God, but I'm not where I want to be, where I, where I know I could be, where I know I should be today. I'm ready to come back home. Maybe you're here today and you just, you don't feel confident about where you stand. You don't feel certain about where you stand with Jesus. I just want to take this last moment. Let's pray together. Come on, God's first call is to himself. Today, would you answer that call? If you say, Pastor, you're talking about me. I need to receive Jesus. I, know, I need to come back to Jesus. I want to know for sure I'm right with Jesus. Would you pray with me? We just lift your hand real high and say, yes, that's me. All over the room. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on all over. Thanks. Just right where you are. Thank you over here. Everywhere in the room. Come on, let's... Let's just have a, an open heart. Anybody else want to say yes? Thank you. Let's pray this prayer together. Let's all say it out loud. This is for everyone who lifted their hand, but let's all pray it. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, I open my life to your love, to your lordship, 
to your calling on my life. I know I've sinned, I've messed up, but I come to the cross where you've paid the price for my forgiveness, for my freedom. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me first. Help me become the person you created me to be. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord.